What I'd like to do is show you how to do a leapfrog on this part. I've already gotten into an alignment using the iterative alignment and I've gotten all the features measured, or I'll say I have, I haven't in my model, but say I have, I've measured everything that I can in this position. And earlier I knew I was going to do a leapfrog, so I positioned the arm the first time to capture all the datum references or all the, the references that I needed to get into the alignment and all the important features that I could reach in this position. Now I knew I had to jump to the next spot. I'm all right with that. I just saved all of that measurement content for this now. So I'd like to show you how to do that leapfrog. And what I've measured are some of these inserts that are in this molded tank. I actually use some shoulder bolts, some machined shoulder bolts to get on there in, instead of measuring the threads. So what I've got is I've got three of those positions tracked in my model here. And I will show you that right here by going into review features. And I have got these three points. I've got an attachment for a plate that's on the front, on the left, and on the right, and a rear hinge hole that is up in this location here. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, those are great locations. They're point reducible features that I can use to leapfrog into my next position. So to do the leapfrog, I'm gonna go into the devices menu, and then I'm gonna go here to the move device position. And then what happens is this screen will come up and it'll give you choices that you can use to, uh, to leapfrog around. And these three are point reducible features. I love using holes. I love using slots. I love using the cones or a sphere uh, or spheres, three spheres, minimum of three. But if you, uh, if you want to go more to stabilize the part, that's totally fine. That's up to you. I've measured three here that are two up in the front on either side and I've measured the, the one uh, the hinge hole in the back here so pretty good spread on the data so I'm gonna highlight those and say okay now what it's saying is move the device and I'll say okay to that here's the next reminder that comes up is the the bolts that I've measured are actually circles on defined planes and it's gonna say okay measure the uh, the plane first on all of these holes so I'm gonna say okay now, what it's asking for in the bottom left is, okay, you've got the attach plate front left first. Okay, and it's going to take the points in the sequence that you've measured them. So I'm going to shoot that first, but I'm going to move my arm first. So I might just speed up the video for you guys so you don't have to worry about that. But what I've got is my plate on this side. I've got protected with our cool protector. If you guys need a protector, give me a buzz or hit my web, we'll, uh, we'll get one out to you. They're very cool for protecting those, uh, those threads. Okay, now let's speed up the video a little bit so I don't bore you with an arm movement. And again, oh, this is a good thing to point out too. You don't have to stay connected to the arm. You don't have to stay powered up with the arm. You can disconnect everything and then move the arm and then reconnect, okay? So I will do that for you and you will see how simple that is. I'm gonna disconnect power and USB. Okay, I've made connection with the arm again. You can hear it click a little bit. And of course I get the, uh, the little error that says you need to exercise your joints. So that is fine. So I will go through that exercise. So what's nice though is you don't have to worry about, uh, about staying connected to the arm. Say if you had to do a leapfrog and you had to move your power or you had to disconnect your USB because you were in the middle of a machine, don't worry about it. Un unconnect everything or disconnect everything, and then you're off and running next time you, con you connect on in. So again, it's asking me for the attachment on the plate, or the attachment plate, uh, front left. So let's go hit that a second. And that I've got right underneath here. So I'll define the plane first, and then shoot the circle. Okay, 
And what it does is it solves for that point. It says, okay, there's the new location for that attachment plate front left point. I'll say, okay. Here's the reminder again. It says measure the plane first. And then the bottom left-hand corner, it says, okay, now we're looking for the attachment plate on the front right. And sometimes what I'll do is if I get into a large measurement session, I will actually take the, uh, take the locations that I'm going to do leapfrog around, and I will put masking tape by them, and I'll write on there what that point is or what that cone number is or what that sphere number is, just because once you get halfway through this and you forget where you're at, sometimes doesn't solve so well. So then you have to back out, re reset it up. So, um, so I always suggest that too. Put some, put some tape on um, so you can identify which, uh, which sequence you're heading to. Okay? Now, I'll hit this front right down here. Here is my plane definition. Here is my circle. That is the shoulder bolt. And then CAM2 will solve for that. And I'll say OK to that. Now it's the reminder again. Shoot the plane. And it's this rear hinge hole here. There was the plane definition. And there is the circle definition. OK, there's the new point for it. I'll say OK. And there's the iterative alignment used as a device position. Uh, what it does is it actually takes those three points that we've measured previous and it just blends the data back in with the new points. And it says, you know, the max error on all three of those points was about 4 thou, a little bit less than 4 thou. And it found it up on the attachment plate uh, that's on the front left. And the bolts on here, or the shoulder bolts that I've got on here and the inserts that are in here are, uh, are molded in. And there's some flash around the, part, the, the, uh, the insert, so that I can buy. Three thou, four thou, I can buy that for an error in this, uh, in this tank here. So I'm going to say OK, but notice what it does too is it calls it device position 002. And I'll say OK to that. Now notice what just has just appeared here is see this blue location right down here? This is my new device position uh, that has just shown up. So that's on the front right of the tank. Um, I'm still using the coordinate system here, the X, Y, Z. That coordinate system is what is coming through the CAD model. So I haven't violated that at all. I've mapped directly to the CAD model using the iterative alignment earlier. And then here was the, uh, the, first, pos the first device position. Boy, that's tough to say unless you've gotten more coffee in you. So that's the first place where I started measurement. And then the second place that I, I jumped to is right on over here on that front right-hand side. So I'll hit the 7 key and give us an isometric view on that one. And then what I'd like to do is just show you that I'm in that, that position. I'm going to take the arm and I'm going to go, let's just say, I'm going to highlight this area here. I'm going to go in a little bit. And I'm going to just take my arm and show you that I'm in this position. And to get a view of where the arm is, I usually go to the measure, inspect XYZ command. And then what it does, it shows you where the probe is actually going. Okay, if I jump back here a little bit, maybe you'd see my probe go just behind where this little cutout is. You can see my probe is in that area there, right on top of that surface there. So I think I'm in the right alignment, or I'm still in the same alignment, and my leapfrog has worked. And I am in, um, in the same alignment or same coordinate system. So I'm going to continue measuring. But the leapfrog, great to remember, if you can do three points that are point reducible features, whether they be on, on circles, on slots, on cones, or on spheres, those work the best. And you don't have to limit yourself to three. You can do more than three. And the first thing I do is after each, each, um, each leapfrog is I'll look at the max error. If it doesn't make sense, if it's you know, 20 thou, then I'd say eh, that might have to be shot again. So I'll back out and I'll redo that leapfrog. Or I might pick different features. Um, this is a good situation too is if I was measuring the tank and somebody needed it for a meeting or to do a photo shoot or to do something else or to use it in production, um, what I would end up doing is saying, okay, keep my positions here, keep my, my shoulder bolts in. So I guess that wouldn't work for production so well. But if I had to show this in a meeting, I can come right back and set back up on my, on my table 
and then leapfrog back into that position by hitting my, my previously um, measured circles. So a great way, you don't, you're not limited to the, to the full measurement. You can measure, jump out, do some other things with this tank, and then come back on in and leapfrog back into that position. Thank you.